Hey, Dr. Josh here. In the spirit of Heart Health Month, I wanted to do a quick video here on the Cardio IQ Blood Evaluation. And the Cardio IQ Blood Evaluation is not a typically run uh, blood evaluation, but it does give us a very complete picture of the relative risk factors related to cardiovascular health. And so beyond just the face value numbers of cholesterol, HDL, triglycerides, and LDL, we can look at deeper indications of where the cardiovascular impositions or risks might be lying. And I'll go over that here in a second. But taking this from the top, I wanted to show you a little bit more about what we do with lipid panels and ultimately this cardiovascular risk panel. When we take cholesterols, HDLs, LDLs, and triglycerides at face value, you know, that's great in, in, in the conventional standards, meaning that if you see a cholesterol over 200, we're ultimately starting to say, oh, our cholesterol is high, and, you know, that might start to warrant some uh, pharmaceutical intervention, or you have to change your diet, you have to decrease your fats, you have to start looking at cholesterol more. Uh, and beyond that information, we're starting to use this in uh, these these lipids as ratios. And so we can take just for instance, a cholesterol and divide it by triglycerides. And so if we're within a two to one ratio, meaning like the cholesterol and triglycerides are more of a one to one ratio, let's say we see 200 in cholesterol, 200 in triglycerides, that's a one to one ratio, that's going to indicate insulin resistance. And so we can take that insulin resistance, and we can use we can look at other blood sugar markers to see if that's if that's a, a consideration, right, that's a functional abnormality. We can also use cholesterol with HDLs or LDLs to look at liver functions, look at cardiovascular functions. So more so now we can take and look at these, the information that we get off the face value lipid panel and give it some sort of functional understanding. All right. Secondly, within this evaluation, we're looking at the fractionation of these lipids. And that's what it's called. This is called fractionation, looking at the, the number, the particle number of LDLs, the size of our LDLs as well as our HDLs, the pattern of these LDLs, and the peak size. The bottom line is that these LDLs can be either big fluffy beach balls, which is great for our arteries, or they can be small cannonballs, which are very destructive for our arteries. And with that information, we can start to use it in, uh, in the context of nutritional intervention, supplemental strategies, or even making better educated decisions on pharmaceutical intervention or pharmaceutical therapies based on what's going on. Now, beyond that then, these lipids have to float around our bloodstream inside of proteins. And so we can look at the different protein structures here. We can look at apoloprotein B and we can look at lipoprotein A. So lipo, the, the protein B here is more cardiovascular uh, unfriendly, if you will, versus the lipoprotein A is the more cardiovascular friendly. And we can take these and we can see if we're an optimal level, moderate or high, which would give us an indication of, again, relative risk. Beyond that, then we're looking at inflammatory markers. And honorable mention that's not on here is homocysteine. Now, homocysteine is an amino acid that's built in the liver, which can create vasoconstriction or constrict the blood vessels to a point where it slows blood down and that is a cardiovascular risk. But in the inflammatory panels, we can look at some really sensitive markers here. One's called high sensitive C-reactive protein or HSCRP. And the, the, the literature is, is very concrete on this, meaning that if we start to creep up at three or more, that's three times the risk of cardiovascular incident probability, meaning heart, heart attack or stroke. And so we wanna make sure that this HSCRP is relatively low at all times. The other one here is this one called LPPLA2, and I'll just keep it at that. And we can use that marker to understand the inflammatory positioning of our cardiovascular disease process. So we can look at these, uh, and taking all these into consideration, we can look at an infl inflammatory summary, looking at we're either in disease risk, okay, based on the results that we're getting here from LDLs. We're looking at the presence of disease. So if we get HSCRP that's starting to climb up, all right, that's going to give us a presence of a disease process. 
or we're in an active process, meaning that we're looking at that LPPLA2 activity, and that can be giving us an indication that this plaque has built up and it's starting to squeeze through the inside of that artery wall, which can ultimately lead to blood clotting and constriction within the, within the vessel, uh, and that is a disease process that's actively happening. So with this information, it gives us a, a deeper dive into what is going on in the cardiovascular system and ultimately helps us create a strategy to support cardiovascular health, whether it's nutritionally, supplementally, or even making educated decisions, uh, helping make educated decisions on pharmaceutical intervention. So I hope this helps. I, I just wanted to take a quick dive into this information that is available to us. And uh, if you need help or you want to look at this uh, from, a, from a factor of getting this in place for yourself, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, have a great day. Look forward to speaking with you soon. Bye for now.